I really enjoyed the film, Olivia. I'm sure you've heard that a lot oh, today. I'm my, so first, my first question, I mean, what, what are the biggest challenges when adapting from such a popular novel? Because, I mean, such a fine art, isn't it, in knowing what to keep in, what to change, and how to maintain that kind of essence and at the same time make it feel cinematic. It's, well, it's a bit of a minefield now I've said it yes. all out loud. <laughs> Yes, it was very challenging. Um, I mean, the, the hardest thing is that, you know, when you read a book and you fall in love with it, as we all did, it you just want to keep everything in. And so then figuring out, you know, how do you combine characters or how do you, you know, uh, restructure it a little bit so that, you know, it, it moves more like a movie and, you know, how do you maintain point of view so you're really with the same character and not jumping in, you know, it's all of those things. Um, but Ultimately, the guiding principle for us was we wanted to take the viewer on the same emotional journey that we as readers had when reading the book um, and uh, and 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 just give the give the viewer the same feeling we had when the book, you know, when we finished the book and we are left with that, you know, kind of wow moment. we wanted, you know, to arrive there um, with the movie as well. And so that was more of the guiding principle. And then just, you know, and then it's just figuring out how do you weave it all, weave all of the elements of suspense and romance and trial into, into one movie. Can you talk a little bit about the look of the film? Because I mean, you're blessed with this sort of beautiful landscape. I went to the marshlands in Louisiana a few yeah. years back, the swamps, and there's something glorious and kind of never ending about it and yet there's something ever so slightly scary and unsettling which I think really came through in your work was that something you were keen to to get across yes I mean the landscape the way Delia describes the landscape is so specific and she's very clear that you know in nature it's not all it is not all beautiful it's violent as well and um and there are times when the marsh feels like the safest place in the world to Kaya. And there are times where it feels incredibly dangerous. Um, And so for us, it was how do we film her experience in that landscape from her point of view? And so, um, you know, it was always, when we were capturing it, it was always, you know, thinking about where she was emotionally in relation to the landscape and how we shot it. And then, you know, the relationship she has with Tate and the time they spend in the marsh is different from the time she spends with Chase. And so, you know, thought, when we were choosing locations to set some of those scenes, it was which scene has that ominous, which landscape has a more ominous quality where we would set this particular scene. And, um, and you know, so it was always from that sort of emotional uh, perspective. Um, and I assume you, like the rest of the world, probably watch normal people during lockdown. So yes. what, was it about, <laughs> what was it about Daisy that made her your Kaya? Because it is a real departure. You don't watch normal people and go, oh, that she'd be perfect for that role. And yet she just completely becomes the part in the film. Absolutely. Yes. I binged normal people like the rest of the world uh, at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, And then when we were thinking about um, who to cast for Kaya, she immediately came to mind because she's just an extraordinary actress. And I didn't know, you know, if she was going to be able to tap into all those sides of Kaya. Um, But I think, you know, in her first audition, she blew us away um, because she's able to convey Kaya's shy, tender, you know, awkward, um, side. And she's also has this incredible strength to her. Um, and so, you know, I think Daisy just, she has all of those qualities and she's able to really tap into them from an honest uh, and genuine place. And Mm. yeah, I can't imagine anybody else in that role now. And I was reading an article about you being one of the kind of the big sort of rising stars of the year and stuff, but it linked your name to that Roe v. Wade uh, project written by Jennifer Magica. I was just wondering, is that something that you'd be keen to take on? Because it feels like a pretty important story that needs to be told. uh, Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes, um, it's a story of the um, of Sarah Weddington, who was um, the lawyer who argued in one Roe v. Wade, and she was 27 years old at the time, and argued before an all male Supreme Court. Um, and um, yes, it's a project I've been attached to and hoping to make next. Okay, brilliant. Well, we look forward to seeing it. If there's anything yeah. to go by, it'll be a pretty good one. So thank you so much. For- <laughs> thank Cheers. you. Take thank care. You. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Is that from the Goonies? Nice. Hey, you guys!